Hello, whiskey lovers. Jock again uh, in the land of Tuscany in Italy. And actually, I'm here on my holidays. And even on holiday, I can't stop thinking about premium drinks. And I promised you already with the last one, I would talk about something really, really nice. And um, we're very close here to uh, um, a town called uh, Montalcino. And in Montalcino, on top of a mountain, they make a very, very high premium wine called Brunello. Brunello di Montalcino. And we are a couple of valleys away from uh, Montalcino. And where we are, it's, uh, um, it's next to a, a, a community called Murlo. It's a medieval town on top of a, a big hill. A medieval town on top of a big hill which um, is uh, very typical for Tuscany and um, in Tuscany uh, they, um, as they know, uh, they, as you know, they make fantastic wines and we're staying here at this villa, you can see here in the, uh, everything that we're doing uh, in the cantina behind me, they make fantastic wine and they are made by a man called Antonio Maciello Antonio Marcello, and he couldn't join us, he was, he was hoping to join us, but he was held up. But I'll read you a little bit from one of his books, uh, a, a little excerpt from his, from his book that he attaches to his wine. And it says, uh, A livid dawn was shining upon our way. A big basket was rising above her head and under its shelter a tin bucket with an iron wire handle was swinging and creaking in my hand. In the shade of a straw stalk, I was working my first vineyard. Today that basket lies idle in a corner. I linger over to savor her dear memory, brought me by the wind, and enraptured by the smell of sulfur and copper green, my labor becomes a prayer. With her, I share my little dream in this Tuscan land where the juniper and the cypress give the name to our wines. Antonio Marcello. And this wine, ladies and gentlemen, wine lovers, it's 100% uh, it's Sangiovese. Um, now I've had it open for a while to breathe and I'm going to pour it and if the camera would please look at me while I'm pouring it. Here we come slowly into... I want to pour this lovely wine right in the sunshine. You'll see it going down into the glass. As I said, it's 100% Sangiovese, and the Sangiovese grape is a, a typical grape for making um, the Brunello wine. And Brunello wine is uh, typical for this area of Tuscany or this area of Italy. And it's one of the premium wines that Italy is, is worldwide known for. Uh, I've just poured it into the glass and uh, hopefully you can see in the sun the deep, deep red of this wine uh, which, is, which has been taken on by the maceration process. Now I have a book here which I'll, I'll come up to the camera with the book. Um, can you see it? Yes? Okay. This book is the... Selezioni dei vini di Toscana. Now, if there are any Italians watching this, and um, please forgive my pronunciation if it's really bad, because uh, it's the, the selection of Tuscan wines, and it's done by a whole group of uh, connoisseurs and um, onologues, people who have uh, really a lot of understanding about wine. And it gets a special mention in page one, 716 of, of this great book of, 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 of Tuscan wines, in which it gets a bronze medal as well. 
and it says the estate of Tenut of Marciello is located in the town of Muro. That's where we are right now, province of Siena, one of the four municipalities of uh, the Val di Merse. The land, half forest, covers about 120 hectares, and for over a decade it's been conducted by a method of organic farming. It produces small amounts of barley and wheat, as well as the excellent uh, olive oil, which we've tasted as well, which is really, really nice. A bit salty, a little bit peppery, beautiful olive oil, you can just take it on bread straight. Um, and of this wine, the 100% Sangiovese uh, grape, uh, they make 2,800 bottles a year of uh, 750 milliliters. And there's about a thousand bottles of uh, a blended wine, uh, uh, um, uh, which is uh, another wine altogether. Not this, this one is called the Cipresso, and the other one is called um, a name which will come back to me in a wee minute. Uh, the other oh, Ginepro, Ginepro. Uh, uh, yes, and the Ginepro is 85% uh, um, Sangiovese, 10% Cabernet Sauvignon, and 5% Syrah, the Ginepro. And it's got a much softer and elegant taste. But now, getting back to this one, which has been given a bronze medal by the connoisseurs in a blind tasting. It's a special mention in the book. In the nose. Now it's been in the glass for a while, it's been even been in the sun. I mean the vapours of red grapes are just overwhelming. Uh, red berries, uh, very very much the, uh, the taste of a strawberry and uh, raspberry in the smell. I haven't even had it in the mouth yet. In the mouth, so full, so incredibly full. Um, if you go to the supermarket on a Friday night for wine to go with your Friday night evening meal, this would not be the bottle that you would buy, um, unless you were having some very very special guests over. This is really totally and utterly excellent. This is a, a, a top quality wine, which is a, a, a wine which is the type of wine like, like Brunello is. Um, it's not a Brunello because geographically it cannot be called a Brunello, but it's the exact same as Brunello. You can just taste the, um, as, as a Reserva wine, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful wine. Lovely, full bodied, it's got a little bit of butter in the taste, a little bit of toast. Some uh, red berries, raspberries, strawberries. Drying, drying, drying towards the finish. And leaving a lingering taste of berries uh, in the mouth. It's a, it's a 2008. That's the um, that's its year. It's a time. It's at 14 months, by the way. I forgot to say that. 14 months. Now uh, you can see one of the barrels here. Um, this is an old used barrel. This one here, uh, which is French made. French barrels. Um, the French barrel is uh, a barrique, a barrique barrel. Uh, made in France, um, 14 months in, in such a barrel it's had, and then it's had uh, a couple of years of uh, time in the bottle. After that, you give it, I've given it more than an hour to breathe in that bottle before I even opened it, and after that hour, the smell and the taste of this wine is just overwhelmingly beautiful. It is one of the most well-balanced wines that you can come across. This can really compete with any of your top quality wines. If you're in Italy, ladies and gentlemen, lovers of whiskey and wine and 
Grappa has all of the good life. Lovers of cats, for example. If you like any of this, please look it up. Um, you can see it um, on the internet. You can find it on the internet. It's a Toscana, uh, Masciano. Um, he's actually just getting his uh, feet on the ground just now in the wine world. Antonio, and, and hopefully this little review will help him a little bit. And um, I'm not getting paid for this, totally not. Uh, I, I bought the wine myself to review, and the reason I bought it was because um, I just totally and utterly adored it. Uh, we actually bought a case of it to take back home with us. We're here by car. The smell just fills this glass with a, a warming, berry-like, beautiful, beautiful, round, maybe not completely round, it's a bit more to the drying side than round, butter-like, toast and berries, beautiful wine. And until the next time, ladies and gentlemen, uh, from Scotch and Folk in Italy, uh, saluti tutti. Salute tutti.